Good morning, Leah. Good morning. How are you, Allison? I'm so happy to see you. Welcome. I know. Back. It's been forever. Oh, I had two really good shows. It is nothing, nothing about my co-hosts or the former, you know, the previous two weeks, but I just, I've missed you. We are used to seeing each other every Friday and having fun and, uh, it's 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 been strange not meeting with you. you know, sure. Actually, the first Friday you were on, I uh, was getting my car tuned up, and uh, I was waiting in the lobby at the dealership watching you and Becky talk. So that was That's great. Right. That first week, I did see you in the comments, and um, but the thing is, is I can't say anything because I've also been in the comments on the weeks that I haven't been here, so I don't yeah. know. We just don't have I, much going on, I guess. Yeah, I got my. But my oil changed finally. Uh, it was a little overdue, but I figured I didn't drive for two months, so it was fine. I didn't it was it wasn't hurting. <laughs> right, right. I know. Yeah, this the car, the regular schedule you might be on with your car, whether it is super on top of it or possibly a little delayed like me, it just kind of all it all didn't matter for like half of this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like yeah. what? Because <laughs> I'm usually yeah. pretty good about staying on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I didn't drive for two months, so. What has that happened to turn into an extra four because I'm just driving so much less? Oh, I know. Yeah, not going anywhere else. Um, what happens to me is I am pretty good at staying on top of things as long as that little sticker they give me doesn't peel off the car. And something has been happening where they've been like the past two times they've like curled up and then just fallen and then they're <laughs> then they're lost to the abyss of my car. And I'm like, well, I try to remember like what the so it's like, I just try to remember the date and at least try to go from there. Um, so I'm sure, who knows, maybe I'm getting it done too often because I'm not driving those full amount of miles, but oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> on things like the sticker, and the appointment card and the calendar reminder to pop up. I know you do that too at work. The calendar reminder is. Saves my life. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I have a meeting tomorrow. I forgot you about know, that. Right? Right. Well, I mean, this is kind of probably embarrassing, but I have a recurring forever Till infinity calendar reminder to send in timesheets every two weeks. I need to do that one because yeah. Because sometimes it will be Friday. It will be like at two o'clock and I'll be like, oh, I, mean, I got to start collecting timesheets. I got to do this. Somehow I managed to forget. I don't know. But, uh, I know. Well, I'm really happy to have you back. And while you were gone, I did, um, think that perhaps we should introduce ourselves. I know that like a lot of times you say good morning, Allison, and I don't always say your name. Oh. Um, I realized that probably we never introduced ourselves after the very first episode. You're right, we haven't. You know, and so since I had a guest host the past two weeks, I kind of was like, you know, I introduced them. So I was thinking I could say that maybe when we start our shows, it'd be like, you know, I'm Allison and I'm the technical services librarian at Fairfield County. So I process all the new material and uh, I don't know, something like that. I'm, I'm the <laughs> coordinator of adult services at Fairfield County District Library and I do all the adult stuff, um, adult books, magazines, uh, newspapers, computer at one point in time um, programming. Yes, at one point in time, who knows when that will will start back up again. Hello, Liz. Good Hello. to see you. Um, so yeah, that's me. Yeah. So I thought, you know, whether we do the same thing each time or at least just say who we are. I was just thinking that we, I mean, I, probably context clues could pull it together, but I don't think I've ever said your name. You say good morning, Allison, a lot, but until today, I don't think I say good morning, Leah. So you're just some <laughs> random person. So sorry everybody about that who might be watching down the road and sees this and is like, well, who are who are these ladies? <laughs> <laughs> they just like talking about books and random stuff, whatever pops into their head for stuff. Did you want to talk about one thing that might fall into that random stuff category first before we talk about books today? Sure. Um, during the break, uh, my, my break, it wasn't a break. I just, I had some vacation days I had to use, so I used them. Um, I, I didn't do a whole lot because, you know, pandemic, there's not a whole lot to be done right now. But one day um, I decided to go to the zoo because I thought outside, I can wear a mask, it'll be, it'll be great. And while the animals themselves were great, the humans were not. Hi, Melanie. Um, and Liz loves the random stuff. So 
here's random stuff for you. Um, oh, sorry about the echo. I don't really know what to do about that. I, I can't hear it. What that's worth. I'm enjoying this. Um, okay. <laughs> um, I, I was disappointed in the number of people who were not wearing masks, even though, yeah, I get it. You're outside, but there are people around like wear your mask. And they had signs like anytime you would go into a building, there would be signs like masks required in the buildings and people wouldn't wear their masks. And it was just, um, very disappointing and but I love animals I love them like the sugar gliders like made me like I was just like oh my god they're so cute and they were just like darting around and they're just so small and they're just so adorable I loved watching them like I could have stood there and watched them a lot more but again it was inside and the people behind me were not wearing a mask and people really 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 do not like to stay six feet back. Like I would stay six feet away from the people like in front of me and be like, oh, well they're there at the viewing area. I'll be right here. And people would be like right up behind me. It was just, that was really annoying. But I love the animals. Um, a connection issue on Leah's end. Looks like hmm. it's clearing up though, which sounds positive, I think. Okay. Uh. Sorry about the echo. Should I get out and get back in? I don't know. Let's see if the library will cut. Mary, let us know if you're still hearing the echo now and let us know if we should go out and go back in. Until yeah. then, Lena, tell us if you saw the sea lions. Chris wants to I know. I did not see the sea lions, Chris, but I did watch the otters for a bit. I love the otters. They're so playful. They had like this little toy and they would take it up to the top of the waterfall and like let it loose and it would go down the waterfall and they'd chase it down the waterfall and get it and then take it back up and let it loose and then chase after it again. Like they loved, loved that toy and playing on the waterfall. That and sounds like playful and fun. <laughs> it was. And, um, oh, Mary says we're good. Okay. Um, I really like Theo Coppy. Like he was just like, hey, you want to see me? And just like walked over and was like, here's my stripy butt. Look at that. <laughs> like, that's, the animal that's, like, that's the animal that's like half zebra, right? It looks like it's half zebra. Yes. Like the back end is yeah. got the stripes that the zebra does, but it's more closely related to the giraffe. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, it has a prehensile tongue, which is like really weird. But it can like wrap its like its tongue around the branch and pull the leaves off. And it was, but yeah, it um, um Oh, Mary wants to know, yes, this is my Moira mug. The world is falling apart around us and I'm dying inside. Is the mug I'm drinking out of this morning. So good vibes over here, good times had by all. But yes, it is a Moira mug. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Melanie, I did say the Okapi. Yep. That is, um, <laughs> you, you like that reenactment of me showing off in the butt? Yes, the striped butt. Of <laughs> um, so yeah, I had a really fun time at the zoo. And that, um, you had shared an article from Library Journal. And when I went looking for it, I also found another article from School Library Journal. They both shared articles about um, like video streaming, like animal video streams. And I'm loving them right now. Um, for those of you who haven't heard my complaint in the past, my office is in the basement of the library. So I have no windows. I have no idea what it's doing outside. Um, I never see sunshine. I am pasty white for a reason. <laughs> um, and uh, I get very sad, especially in the <laughs> Um, so I like to, um, I, I've got like two computer monitors and earlier this summer, I was using that window swap that I had told you all about lately. I have been doing animal, um, live streams. Um, I really like the birds, like birds are just, you know, they're, they're so active and I love the sounds. Um, so I've been doing like some bird cams and like the Cornell lab has multiple bird cams. So you can like. Uh, watch birds all the time. Lots of zoos have cams where you can do like aquariums. Like I love, I love an aquarium. Um, so, oh, 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 the other thing I got, <laughs> I'm very excited this morning. 
I'm sorry. The other thing I got to do with the zoo was pet the stingrays. And um, it's it's so cool. Like you put your fingers in the water and like if they don't want you to touch them, they don't, they, they stay near the bottom. Um, but if they do, they, they'll come up and you just like rub your fingers down their back and they've got that weird feel to them. Like they're, um, it's not slimy, but it's- I know. Yes, it's, because it's I have I've pet a stingray at the Newport Aquarium as well. And it's, yeah, it's it's like you want to call it slimy, but it's not really slimy, but you don't know how to describe that texture. At least it's it's, yeah. it's one of the kind. And, uh, yeah, it's more slimy, but it's got that slickness to it, yeah. Yeah, I recommend taking advantage of that if you're ever at one of those places that has the little pool that you can, because uh, yeah. the one at Newport, I think, also had some type, type of, like, very harmless shark in it that we could also like pet the top of the shark and yeah it's just you feel it just it feels weird yeah. chris says i am extra caffeinated this morning and i think he's right i i have had more than uh, my fair share of coffee this morning um and melanie suggested nature's neoprene yes so, yes that that's yeah. that's good that's a good description of it. So. Yes, and that's and I mean that's what we're going for when we make neoprene stuff. Probably is uh, mm. trying to emulate that. So yeah, that, yeah. Well. yeah. <laughs> so that was that was really fun. I really liked those, and um, so that was. And I swear to you, there was this one, um, and because he had a weird marking on his on his back, um, there was this one rich stingray who he would just like he would kept coming to me like he would avoid the person beside me and kept coming up for me to pet it was just oh um, he must have he probably wanted to come home with you you could have right? adopted him i'm sure you could have provided a really happy life in your bathtub a very natural long happy life for a stingray living in your bathtub <laughs> melanie says she wants to swim with otters and that would be yeah. fun yeah Although, otters can be very mean they look sweet and adorable but from some of the articles I've read, like maybe otters can be mean. Oh, but, that's, that's but yeah, they're, they're adorable to watch. Well, as far as your like bird cam and stuff goes, it's funny like that you say that. Whereas at Northwest, sometimes we're I I won't speak for everybody. Sometimes I feel like I am literally being driven crazy by the sound of birds because sometimes there they'll be. When we had the Oriole feeder out, if the Oriole feeder wasn't filled in time, the Orioles would like, there'd be this Oriole on this bush near the front that would just like scream at the window, like trying to let you know that the feeder needed to be filled. And the way the shape of the building and the, the way the building is and the acoustics in there, even though the Oriole's screaming out front, we it's like echoing throughout the whole building. That and then is very odd acoustically. It is, it is. And um, so that's that's just kind of like a funnier <laughs> side of that. It is, it is really nice to hear that bird sound too, because we're also near that like, I don't know what to call it, that swampy. Mm -hmm. area. Yeah. And so there's a, there's just a ton of birds that move through there. And sometimes um when you go outside, it sounds the the birds, there's so many birds and they're all chattering. And it to me almost sounds like running water or something like the way that they're all like it's just something I'd never heard until yeah. I had never been around that many birds at one time I don't think it's so a bird babble, like a babbling brook like it's exactly like, yeah yes and that was what I thought when I heard it I was like this is where the phrase babbling like I could just, it all came yeah. together in my head that's what that is because it does sound like babbling and it, so it does sound like moving water and it's yeah so we do have a lot of and then I do have a window, as I've we've talked about before, and I am sorry that Leah doesn't. But the flip side of that too is that because of the orientation of my desk, I'm always worried that I'm going to be um, like really tan on this side because that's the side <laughs> that the window faces, or have a <laughs> or have a lot of wrinkles on this side, and then the side to be pale and not. So you know, it just. You could, you could move your desk every other year, like you know. I could just face it the other side, direction. One year will be that side. <laughs> <laughs> I just rotate myself completely around in a, a circle over the course of four years to tan evenly. There you go. You saw that's it. reasonable. That's very reasonable for me to put in a help desk again and have someone move my desk every so often. Hey. You need a little variety in your life. Rearranging things gives you a new outlook, a new perspective. Mm -hmm. you, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. So yeah. you had a lot. Of, you had. A, it sounds like even though you didn't. I mean, even though it's not like a 
traveling type of vacation. It sounds like you still had a really nice time. I did. I, it was it was good to have some time off and yeah. yeah. I just wish people had been more responsible. It just, that was a little disappointing, but yeah. I had a good time. Yeah, well, we did miss you here and I missed you at work. I made you missed you just you missed so many new books is the thing. Because we got all this stuff in. Like in October, we've talked about this before. Like in October, we get a ton of new fiction. Like every fiction author releases a book in October, it feels like. Um, and then here in November, we start to get what I think of as like gift books. Um, mm -hmm. They tend to be more nonfiction stuff and things you might give someone for Christmas this is the way that I kind of think about it in my head. And maybe that's not the way that they think about it when they put them out. But like you just get Probably. a lot of you get like a lot of like nice biographies, a lot of like nice cookbooks and, you know, just things that kind of visually very appealing. Yeah. Visually appealing, sometimes more expensive. Um, and so we started to get a lot of those things. And um, I, I always think about the biographies too, as being like when Christmas rolls around and you got to get something for like a, da a dad or an uncle or a brother, not that only men read biographies and not that only men are hard to buy for anything like that, but just through the types of books you're like, okay, well this, you know, ninth yeah. biography of this president <laughs> like, or whatever. Um, yeah. So we got a ton of stuff in and I won't talk about it all, but I did make this very long list of things. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, was, I know it was a very long list. And then I color coded them because there's, I think you can agree with me. No, no, any reason to use a pen or a marker, right? right. Any reason. <laughs> Love color coding. I know. So um, I won't just, okay. Where do I start? I was thinking. Biographies. Okay, we'll start with some biographies. <laughs> saw, a lot of people probably saw, um, and these are autobiographies and biographies uh, mm -hmm. together because um, famous people tend to write books around this time of year too and send their thing out. So Matthew McConaughey had his new kind of like autobiography come out. It's called Green Lights. And you it all right, all right, all right. I'm sorry. I know, I know. And it's, I think it's a combination of like, it is an autobiography, but it's a lot of like journal. I think journal entries and him reflecting on times in his life where things happened, he got a green light. Um, and what I know can tell you for sure about this Matthew McConaughey book too, is that it had like a half cover that we had to figure out how to put the jacket on. So in my yeah. mind, whenever I think of Matthew McConaughey's book, I'm going to think of that jacket because they're hard. It's hard to affix the, the top part of the half jacket. You can't use the regular tape. So yeah. Thanks a lot, man. And then, <laughs> Getting hate from the librarians. I know. <laughs> um, we got um, a biography of Cary Grant called Cary Grant, A Brilliant Disguise. And the author on that is Iman. We got a biography of um, Eleanor Roosevelt, just called Eleanor. Uh, the, the last name on that is, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's like Michael and then I-S. Michaelis? Michaelis? It was probably like... Yeah. Anyway. But just since the, bi the biography is only called Eleanor, and you're going to type that in, how are you going to find that? The author is M-I-C-H-A-E-L-I-S. <laughs> yeah. um, and then we got one. This was the one that kind of good. Stanley Kubrick, an American film. Gosh, I'm terrible my handwriting. Um, <laughs> Stanley Kubrick, an American film something. Um, the author on that, his last name is spelled, spelled M-I-K-I-C-S. Um, that one's not too long. Some of, most of these actually are not too long. They're not too gigantic. Um, another celebrity autobiography memoir, Lenny Kravitz, Let Love Rule. Oh, yeah. Um, I read a lot about that coming out recently. Yeah, um, there, were, there were lots of articles on that one. Yes. This one's pretty short, um, but it seems to be pretty authoritative and the first of its kind. It's called The Butterfly Effect, and it's a biography of Kendrick Lamar. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So. I think um, doesn't that one talk about like um, Kendrick Lamar and then like some of the uh, social justice movements? Like, wasn't wasn't there some kind of tie to that? It perhaps may be, um, and it's also his like impact on music. Okay, so it could all be in there. It's not super long, and I do remember investigating and looking into it and being like, "Is this really a biography? Does it go in the biography section?" And the 
um, consensus was definitely yes. They described it as like the first biography of Kendrick Lamar, but it very well. I, I think it, it talked about how like some of like some of what he did influenced other people and some of that led to like some of the social justice. Okay. Probably so. Probably so. so. Um, and so, like I said, that's the first any in any way authoritative um, mm -hmm. look at Kendrick Lamar's life and work. So I think that that is probably a good one for some people. And then mm -hmm. also you've probably heard about this one, but uh, Jerry Seinfeld's book, Is This Anything? Um, and that is essentially a collection of his material for decades. Like he's kept it all written yeah. down in like legal pads. And so it's not a it's not a biography or an autobiography in any sense like that. It is just a collection of jokes and material, but that have been pulled together in a in a um cohesive format to kind of take sh a shape of his life and what has you know what was going on but it's not in any way an actual biography but that's you know it's it's in it's in our collection as uh understanding of comedians but um it is because it's a collection of his work and i can confess that is one of those books that i didn't even bother reading the review about <laughs> like i saw jerry seinfeld has a book mm -hmm. i'm gonna order it yeah i didn't bother to read the review like i didn't bother to read the review on the matthew mcconaughey one like mm -hmm. i just <laughs> you can cheat sometimes when you're the person yeah. responsible for ordering material. Yeah. You don't have to read every review that comes out. You can just see the author and be like, add to cart, add to cart. Well, and it has a lot of hold. These all went out yeah. on hold. <laughs> People certainly were looking for them. Um, but the Jerry Seinfeld one, um, I, I read a little bit about it and um, just that I feel very impressed and he should feel very pleased that he has kept all of this stuff through all these decades, just all these legal yeah. pads. Like, I don't know why I wouldn't, you know, this is my life's work basically, right. um, but he just kind of shapes it together and in a way that moves, moves through the decades. And I think that that would probably be very interesting for a lot of different types of people, but certainly for Jerry Seinfeld fans. Yeah. Um, one of my, and then my favorite biography that we got so far, um, is called Chasing Chopin, and the author is last name is Lafarge. And I was excited about this because, and Chopin wrote the Funeral March, and this book is about, I think, kind of specifically about the Funeral March, and then about his life as a whole. Um, and I have no interest in classical music that I really know of, but something about it just seems really appealing to me specifically because there's a website associated with it. And I just love when people are able to integrate things like this. So the website is whychopin.com and it takes you chapter by chapter. It gives you the things that you would wanna to listen to associated with what's discussed in that chapter. It gives you videos to watch. It gives you different performances of pieces. And um, I just, I think that integration, I, it'd be great if it could all be in the physical book, but it's right. not, which is yeah. fine. Um, and, but I just, I think that that's really, really neat. And it made me want to read the book. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Obama, he, you know, he's got the biography that's mm -hmm. um, out. And I'm pretty sure he released a, um, a playlist. Like, he did. <laughs> while, you're, while you're reading this book. And that's, that's always so much fun. You know, yeah. every once in a while, you have an author who, like, will include a CD in the back of the book. I know, like, Jody Picot did that. Yeah. Um, Oh, it's been a while ago now, but she had that one book that had the, the CD in the back to listen to while you listen to the, read the book. Yeah. And I think that is, it's really, I like when they make the, the books like more than just words on the page, I guess. I, I, I think I, that's one of the reasons I really love audiobooks. Yeah. Is because you get more than just. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes in the audiobooks, like I always use this as an example, but um, in, Amy Poehler's book, she includes the actual audio clips from the shows as she's discussing them, which you don't get in the print version. You right. get to actually hear. And then she has, I think it's Amy Poehler, has people in her life narrate the different parts, you know, if they're available, her parents read a chapter and that kind of thing, which you, again, you just wouldn't get. And I think that the, that part of the difference there is that she's a performer, you know, so yeah. she's written this book. <laughs> She can understand what would be appealing. Oh yeah, Andrea confirmed she interviews her parents. <laughs> um, oh, and Laura says, okay, so Melanie wants to know if she's the only person in the world who dislikes Seinfeld. And Laura says that she's never even seen a whole episode of Seinfeld. So they can bond over that. 
I also <laughs> never seen a whole episode of Seinfeld, but that's because I'm I was too young. <laughs> yes, you're you're young. <laughs> so um, <laughs> it never crossed my path naturally, really. Yeah. So those were my biographies. Did you want to throw anything in so I don't dominate? Um, I know that there's there was one book that that just came out that I was I had it. I had myself on hold for it and um the hold came in while i was on vacation and because there was a waiting list it went on to the next person because i forgot to pick it up and i'm so disappointed um it's clan lands um by sam hewan and graham mctavish uh if you don't know they're two very wonderful scottish actors they star in um the outlander series the 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 series on stars based on the books by diana gabaldon and um but but they just like go on this tour of scotland and um <clears throat> they talk about whiskey and scottish history and like all kinds of fun stuff but they're really like they're really cool and i can't wait to see this book um but do you know the secret yes I accidentally grabbed Graham McTavish's butt one day by accident. Um, <laughs> okay, so I went to an Outlander um, convention because, you know, they, the show has a huge following. So what do they do? They have a convention. This was pre-COVID days. Um, and you, you could, like, take pictures with the actors. And I did that. And um, when I went to put my arm around him, he was taller than I expected. Mm -hmm. Um, like I'm just not used to, I'm not around people who are that tall. He's a very, very tall gentleman and his legs were longer than I thought. So when I put my arm around his waist, it wasn't his waist. It was his butt, like, it, cause his legs were longer. So his butt was higher than normal. And I accidentally, I accidentally touched his butt. And, um, every it, single comment now is accident in quotes. It, it was, it was an accident. I was so embarrassed and then I was just like, I'm, I'm not going to acknowledge that I have my hand on his butt and I'm just going to pretend that this is normal. And I'm not doing, I'm not one of those crazy stalker fans. I'm not grabbing your butt, I promise you. But I accidentally grabbed his butt. Well, you've now confessed in front of the entire world. You've confessed in front of the entire world. Holly is jealous of your, again, in court <laughs> accident. I um, know, Graham Cavish is, He's beautiful, but it, I swear to you, it was an accident. Uh, if I, I, did, I will say that I did, I was going to write that book down here, but then I was like, I'm not going to write it down because Leah is definitely going to check that out and she's definitely going to bring it to the show. And so I didn't write it down, but as it turns I'm out, you probably. brought it to the show because I'm so excited to read this book. I really, really, really want to read this book. <sighs> But I forgot to pick up the hold because I wasn't there. And I have my notifications go to my work email because, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, get the notification when you're at work so you can go yeah. get the book and you don't forget. Yeah. You know, well, and this is just an example, too, that uh, just because you work the library doesn't mean you get any kind of special treatment. They're still going to send your book back if you don't pick it up in time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I have two things before we go. I had two more things I wanted to. I'm ready. Wow. Sorry. Somehow. Um, this book here, I am not familiar, um, with Rachel Bloom, but she is the star of your crazy ex of crazy ex-girlfriend, but I just brought this because anyone who is here for our, um, our nostalgia, uh, nostalgia episode will understand why I had to check this book out. The cover, I'm sorry for that that cover. It totally um, looks like from that, that, that era. Yes, this is your your hazy 80s uh, teen drama type of cover, but it actually, it's a collection of essays and I think they're going to be very funny. Um, I, did check, I did put it on hold and check it out. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading this. This is what I'm gonna be reading next, I think. Um, Rachel Bloom, I wanna be where the normal people are, a collection of humorous essays, autobiographical essays. And then the final thing um, that I wanted, or the final book I wanted to make sure I mentioned was one called, this is a totally different vibe, so I'm sorry. One called Alone Together, Love, Grief, and Comfort in the Time of COVID-19. Um, and it's a collection, yes, um, it's a collection of, yeah, and it's a collection of um, essays and stories and poetry, I think a lot of different types of things um, about, that were written this year during the pandemic. Um, and the proceeds go to um, bookstores, 
independent bookstores, I believe, uh, who have been impacted by the shutdowns. And the audiobook and the ebook version have even more content than the print version does. So any one of those, your pro your purchase will go toward bookstores um, and relief from shutdowns during the pandemic. And if you do an e-version or an audio version, you'll get more stories and more content. Um, so I just wanted to mention that one because it does look yeah and it's, worth a purchase. Yeah, I think it's it's, it's a really great idea to to do that because, you know, bookstores did take a really big hit this year. And, um, you know, it's just, it's interesting. I think it's going to be, I haven't started it yet, but I checked it out. Um, it's going to be interesting to um, just get p different people's take on this thing that we've all struggled through. Like it, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's just this big cultural event and like, like every, everything changed. So it'll be interesting to, to read about how, how different people saw that time. So yeah. it'll just, it'll be interesting. And Liz, I'm very sorry that my mug isn't exciting. I do not have exciting mugs like Allison does. Um, I lean pretty hard on, the, on that donut mug, though, because it's just so cool. But because I'm extremely neurotic, when I drink out of the donut mug, I drink my chai latte mix. And I didn't want to drink regular coffee out of it, which is what I'm having this morning, because I would pick it up and I would feel it in my hands and I would expect it to be chai tea latte. And it wouldn't be. And it would be confusing and disappointing. So that is why I'm using a different mug today. Um, but I, my my cup may not be exciting, but the caffeine is really working today. It's it's. It's hitting more than usual. You're here, man. You're but buzzing hard. It. It's like you had my buzzing hard iced coffee mix. I mean, it's it's my normal. It's my normal blend. I don't know what's going on. I'm just having one of those days. <laughs> Melanie asked me to publish a list of the books that we talked about. So what I'm going to do then, um, I'll put the books that I talked about. I'm also going to include because I have like 14. <laughs> Okay, actually it's more like 10 cookbooks. And I feel like people will be into those as well. I'll put put that in there. And then, um, so I'll just, this long list, I'll, I'll check my handwriting and I'll verify spellings. And um, I will, I guess we'll either put it in the comments or if we can find a better. Mary can figure it out. Send the list to Mary is what I'll do. But you have to make the list first. <laughs> yes, I have to make the list. I have to make the list first and um, make sure the spelling is correct. Make sure I can read my own handwriting. And then I will send it to Mary and we can put it up there. Chris says my excitement is because I remembered I touched the butt. <laughs> I was excited before we even started talking about that. So, and Melanie said that, you know, librarians love lists. So I get right. it. We do love a good list, especially if we can color code it. So, <laughs> well, Ooh, maybe we can make Mary make the list. Um, uh, oh, I know, I love lists. My whole my whole life is like lists. Um, maybe Mary can make the list different colors. She can color code the list. I, I don't you love how I'm doing work to do, Mary? Yeah, I was gonna say I won't play that on her. She can do that if she wants to. Uh, Liz wants to know if we can make the shows an hour. I think can absolutely should. Oh. That's the question. <laughs> Yeah, that would that would be a whole whole lot. It's in quality content. I, our, our fans love us, Allison. <laughs> they do. They love us, and we could get some more books. Like we're still Wait, on. I, I want to talk about books. I just need to talk about them. This Craigslist confessional. It's a collection yeah. of secrets from anonymous strangers. This woman, she was like all bummed out, and like one day she just sat down and shared her lunch with this homeless guy who was panhandling in front of her work. And like, they talked and like they were honest with each other because, you know, stranger, what does it matter? So she, um, more stories about butts. That could very, pop I can't talk about butts today, both the copy and I am all over the place, but, um, <laughs> but yes, people just share their stories with her anonymously and she shares some of them in this book. And it's just, I, I'm a big fan of like secret sharing mm -hmm. and like post secret. I visited that, that website every Sunday for years. Yes. Like, just things like the humans of New York books mm -hmm. where they share their stories. Like I love that kind of stuff. So getting like real stories from real people. I just, I love, so yeah. I would recommend this book. Craigslist. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, you wedged one more in there. I did. <laughs> well, then you know what? The next time that I'm on here with you, which 
maybe a while because we both have vacation too, continuing into the future. Um, I've had this book checked out since our Halloween episode. So should I do it now or should I do it next time we're on? Do it now. We're still here. Okay. It's a picture book. It's called She Wanted to Be Haunted. And it came in the day of our Halloween show, but I hadn't I hadn't picked it up yet. So she, I checked it out later. And this is the little house who's in the star of the story. This is her mom and this is her dad. And they're both creepy. Her mom is a witch's hut and her dad is like this haunted castle. And she's this cute pink house. And she wants to be haunted. She wants to be spooky. And instead she's really cute and everyone thinks she's adorable. And she has all these flowers growing around and stuff. And it makes her very sad. Look how sad her face is. And so she talks to her dad and she says, do you think that you could give me a bunch of clouds over me to make me look really ominous? And he says, I can do that. But just so you know, like you're fine the way you are, but I'll do that if that's what you want. So she gets these clouds. But what happens is the sun hits a certain way. And so then she just gets a big rainbow over her. <laughs> and she is not, not the cloudy house she wanted to be. So then she goes to see her mom, who's the witch's hut. And she says, can you give me like this really bad smell so that people are like offended by the way that I smell? And she says, I mean, I can do that, but like, you're okay the way that you are, but if that's what you want, I'll do that. So she gives her like this bottle of this bright green like gas and it makes her house smell, it makes the house smell really bad, which attracts all of these dogs for her. So now she's a house, she's a house with a rainbow over it and then a bunch of playful puppies. And so she's like, well, I guess this, I'm just gonna have to embrace this. I'm just cute, that's who I am. And I'll just have to be this. I'm never gonna have a ghost. I'm never gonna be haunted. And she's trying to come to terms with it, but she's disappointed because she feels like she wants to be right. haunted. Um, and, but I, so when she really has to come to terms with it, I got a little ahead of myself, is when this unicorn shows up. <laughs> a unicorn sees the rainbow and the puppies and the flowers. And it's like, you know, and she said, okay, this is just my life now. I'll just have to accept that I'm a house that has a unicorn. But sometimes life has funny plans that we cannot predict. The unicorn was vicious. He bit and spat and kicked. He chewed up all the flowers and then tore up the lawn. He ran at creatures with his horn till they were all gone. And as it turns out, he was like a mean, evil unicorn. So she never had, she didn't get, she had in her mind, like she kind of wanted to be ghosts and stuff. But instead, she just has this mean old unicorn who scared away all the puppies. And now she gets to live with her attack unicorn yeah so that picture book sometimes we give sometimes i just get surprised by things that come in and i just right. didn't help myself so um <laughs> she wanted to be haunted is the name of the book and it is very adorable and if we can end on that note if you guys don't mind thank you for letting me share that because i've had it for like weeks now <laughs> okay <laughs> and, um, your friend, someone, Holly, some, no, they're going so fast now. I can't even, I can't even see who it was. Well, but they, they want to get it for Sean Wang. Yes, <laughs> Holly. And, um, everyone loves that word. So Spawn Lang. Well, good. Spawn Lang. That's very, very <laughs> and loving word for your child. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, this morning has been a delight, Allison. I have it enjoyed it. It so was so nice. We had a lot to catch up on. We probably should have planned an hour for having not having been together for two weeks. Yeah. So, well, and everyone, please join us back here next week. The next couple of weeks, we may have a little bit of variation too, just while everyone's trying to get their vacation in for the end of the year. But um, we'll be here and we'll be looking forward to seeing you guys. And laughing. So, right. You know, actually, Thanksgiving. also, happy Thanksgiving. Oh yes, happy Thanksgiving. We won't yeah. we'll be back before then. So Yeah, so happy and safe holiday to everybody. Okay, COVID. Bye. Bye.